Everyone's really dicey. Today we're going to talk about Dungeon Crawl Classics or DCC. Uh, there's been many different um, role playing systems out there now that try to bring back that old school flavor from original Dungeons and Dragons. But there's this game is is one of the best I've ever played. Uh, it's a fantastic book. Um, first thing to say about it is that, as you said, there are a lot of um, games that harken back to old school D and D. Dungeon Crawl Classics, if anything, harkens back before D and D. They call themselves they they call themselves Appendix N role playing. Right there, that 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 is a that is an obscure reference for old school gamers. Appendix N from the Dungeon Master's Guide, the original Dungeon Master's Guide in 1979, uh, was about uh, inspirational material that Gygax used to create the game. And so, D, uh, DCC goes back to that list and tries to invoke those sources so you've got things like ron howard and conan you got hp lovecraft you've got jack vance and the dying world you've got lord dunsany and of course you've got J.R.R. tolkien as well as others so while the game feels very familiar and 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 uses a system very close to uh second edition you know cleaned up a little bit uh, because nobody, no matter how old school, wants to use Thaco. <laughs> That's just crazy. Um, That's <laughs> 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 um, so, um, but the the game even it feels even rawer than D and D, kind of, in a sense. Um, so you've got you've got the traditional hit points and armor class and you're rolling a d20 but it's all a little streamlined the system's a little streamlined you've got no feats there's no nonsense like attack of opportunities no prestige classes not even really any proficiencies um the idea is that your character had a job before he was a an adventurer and he can just do that sort of stuff Right. If your car, your your character used to be a fisherman, then those are the sort of proficiencies you would have fishing things. Um, races are classes. So dwarf is a class, elf is a class, halfling is a class. Uh, but there are all, there's also wizards and thieves and fighters. Um, so I think the whole idea to simplify this is just to to strip it down to the meat, what you really need to, you know, play the game, and then you can add anything else you kind of want through role playing. So uh, you you roll three d six for your stats as Crom intended, <laughs> and uh, you know you you pick one of these classes, but you don't get to be a class right away. No, 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 no. You start as a zero level nobody, a peasant. <laughs> with, with no class whatsoever. In fact, you usually start as a handful of those and run through an adventure called a funnel. And you, <laughs> you get a handful because they die so easily. <laughs> so if any one of them survives, then, he can, then that person, get, that character gets the first level. And then you, then you can be a fighter or a cleric or whatever. It's really a take no prisoners, really harsh game. Uh, but that leads to um, kind of two-fisted epic adventuring. And it does get epic right away. Uh, it just, you know, level one adventurers have gods and demons and all sorts of crazy stuff in there. And it's got mechanics to, to, um, to foster that sort of role playing. As you were saying, the, the fighter is a lot of fun because a fighter has a deed die, um, which is used to do all those crazy things that fighters do in movies, swinging off chandeliers and grabbing the plate off the table and throwing it in the, the monster's head. You, know, you, you, get the, you get a special die which allows you to do those crazy things, which is really great. You know, dwarves and elves and halflings are kind of what you expect, although uh, halflings are mean little buggers. 
their specialty is two-handed fighting. So they have two, two-handed weapons. And uh, the magic, the magic in the game, this game is just insane. They, they, they love magic. And they, they spend a lot of time on it, almost too much time. <laughs> we'll get, I'll get, come back to that. But each spell has an entire page devoted to it. And there are different levels of effects based on how well you roll. So a spell doesn't do necessarily do the same thing every time you cast it. And there are, there are special rules for interesting ways that your, your magic can manifest. And there's corruption so that your, char- your, your mage character, as they go up in levels and cast more magic, will slowly be corrupted um, physically. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll grow horns and, and, you know, one leg will be longer than the other and, and they'll, they'll, vomit, they'll vomit blood whenever they cast a light spell. And all sorts of really chaotic, strange things. The game really encourages the, the, the game master or the judge, as he's called, uh, to customize everything. There are, no, there are no generic monsters. There is no generic magic item. Every magic item is unique. And every monster is unique. Now, the, the, the rule book does include a list of sample monsters, but you're supposed to just make up your own. They're, they're, you know, keep the players guessing. Yeah. Yeah. What do, what do you think? You've played it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's what makes it fun for me now. I, I'm not your typical player. I tend to like, like fast action. I tend to like things that are dangerous. I like to feel that what I'm doing is daring and may possibly uh, kill my character by, you know, accidentally or, <laughs> or in combat or something like that. It's just, it's, I mean, uh, I, 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 it's thrilling. The game is very thrilling, and I and I enjoy yes. that a lot. I, it's something yes. that you have to be on your toes for. This game's not going to take it easy on you. You either have to no. like uh, uh, go out and 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 do your best, or you're just going to die. Your character's just going to be dead. And I like that. I, I uh, it's it's a it's a it's a lot of fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. It is. And they have lots of great adventures. They've been putting out modules a lot. They've got you know. They, this, they've got a lot of zero level ventures, which are those funnels, right? Where uh, you, you play a horde of characters and most of them die. <laughs> and you've got, uh, you've got adventures. Let's say this is, this is moon slaves of the cannibal kingdom. So they've got a lot of great modules. Um, there's some good third party uh, material out there as well. Somebody's put out a little handy book which is all the charts, all collected in one place, which is very useful, which is very useful. The book has fantastic art. This is the, this is the GM screen. Look at that, isn't that great? Some yeah, that's great pretty. stuff, that's really nice. I would say the game has two potential problems. Um, the first one is, um, well, I mentioned that the game gets epic right away. You know, there are first level adventures where you're dealing with intrigue in the courts of chaos. There are gods and everything. That's fantastic. The, game, the game's got this don't wait for the epic fun philosophy. Where you just dive right in. And you're doing amazing things right away. Only, the only problem with that is that I once played a con game um, with one of the writers for the game, and and we were playing high level characters. So we were we were tenth level. The 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 levels in the book only go up to level ten. You can play above that, but the ones they give you go up to level ten. And I gotta say that the game at level ten felt a lot like the game at level two. You know, some of the numbers were bigger, but the scale of Epic, I mean, if you start Epic, there's not too much further you can go. <laughs> you can't really, there's only so much you can do. But I don't really see that as a problem unless you've, you would, unless you've played a lot. I mean, if you, you mm. because there's always more Epics that you just kind of have to change how you're being Epic. But I, I suppose that eventually it could get a little too epic, if that's a thing. 
the other well, what I joke. What I enjoyed about DCC is that their their modules they're 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 always pretty crazy. It's always like 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 fantasy, medieval fantasy mixed with science fiction, mixed with horror. It's like you'll you'll get some sort of weird stuff coming uh, playing one of their adventures. The their their adventures are weird and and epic and and macabre and um, just earth shattering. The other the, the magic that brings us to the next problem. But next potential problem. The magic is also um, weird and eldritch and very chaotic. And sometimes that can be a little difficult for a game master to handle. Take the magic missile spell, for instance. So when you cast a spell, you roll on a chart to see how well you do. Um, and you know, you add your levels and things. So you basically have an idea how good you're going to be. But just like when you swing a sword, um, you, can, you can roll really well. You can critical. The spell actually ranges from one little magic little arrow to, you know, a thermal nuclear missile. <laughs> so <laughs> I was playing a, in a, a scenario, um, you know, that the DCC put out and, and we get to, the, we get to the, the gate and there's a monster guard in the gate and my my caster casts his magic missile and, and rolls a critical success and destroys the guardian, the gate, and half the freaking castle. <laughs> so that can be a little hard to plan for sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, that's part of the fun, but it can be a little difficult. A little harder to deal with is, like I said, the game really, really likes magic users. And, and, you know, a good third of the book is just spells. Um, and um, a lot of extra time is spent to other things. You know, the magic users get, the, I already mentioned corruption. Uh, they have charts for how their, their ma magic manifests. So for each person, it can be a little bit different. Um, they, have, they have supernatural patrons, which are supernatural creatures um, from you know, ancient aliens to demons to godlike creatures to world swallowing frogs, really weird stuff that the, um, the magic user can, um, you know, can trade favors to for other powers, uh, like a warlock in, in D and D in fifth edition, only okay. dialed up to 11 because this is DCC. Contrast that with the clerics. Right? The clerics are, of course, servants of the gods. But whereas there are maybe there's maybe a dozen pages about the about the patrons and the special patron powers and 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 special spells they grant to their followers, the clerics get one chart on one page that lists some gods. You know, you get the name of the god and, and their alignment and, and what they're the, the god of, and that's it. It really seems like the game is putting too much focus on the magic users um, at the expense of some of the other players. I know when my group first started playing this, we, we uh, thought, okay, well, this isn't gonna work. We either all have to be magic users or none of us have to be magic users because the magic users were really just overshadowing everybody. Now we eventually mm -hmm. learned how to, uh, how to work that out so that we don't have to do that anymore. You know, one of the things you need to do, uh, the first thing you need to do, since each spell has a whole page, one of the problems we were having was that the magic the guy playing the wizard kept asking for the rule book and they'd have to look up a spell and have to read the charts and it would take him, take him five minutes to figure out how he's going to cast, which spell he was going to cast and how he was going to cast it while well, everybody else just had to sit around and wait for him. What you want to do is you want to print out all of his spells and put them together in a spell book. So you give every, <laughs> every magic user at your table, every wizard gets a physical spell book. And then, of course, so you just take a notebook, and I went on site and printed out some occult gibberish to put on it. See, make it look like a spell book. <laughs> and 
inside, you uh, he has all his spells here. So during play, he can look up his spells instead of borrowing the rule book all the time. And it's a nice little prop, yeah. and he can keep all his stuff in there. So that's great. The other thing I would do is I would show the clerics a little love, uh, flesh out their gods. And the easiest way to do that is to take the patrons away from the wizards, turn them into gods, and give them to the clerics. Because the wizards mm -hmm. already have plenty of things. They don't need patrons on top of everything else. And the patrons, you already have write-ups. They're all there. If you just turn them into gods, give them to the clerics, I think that solves the problem there. But those are, those are, uh, those are small problems, and hap I'm happy to deal with them. And and I think it's a fantastic game. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I, I agree with you with the with the magic levels. They, they I wish that was more controlled. And um, and uh, someone had make sure. I hope game masters are able to temper that. But uh, I have to say personally, I do like the fact that whenever someone casts like magic missile, and it's never the same spell. Um, it's I and I wish other systems were at least trying to be as creative as, as that. I don't think it's more boring as trying to play a wizard in some other system and it's the same spell list over and over and over I, again. I completely agree. And I actually love the fact that the, uh, the, the, each spell has a, a range of things it can do. Um, I just wanted to point out that it, it has the potential it could, to get to crazy. Everything. Yeah, to kill everything. <laughs> but that's all right. Um, I'm I'm all for having the spell show up differently and the mercurial magic that that's how your magic manifests and and things that happen as you cast a spell that really that really helps to change the flavor so even if two mages cast the same spell they're going to cast it differently uh, mm -hmm. you know one might speak eldritch some sort of eldritch tongue and his eyes glow blue um, as he as he summons the ether out of the air around him around him the the other the other mage might spill vermin out of his um, out of his cloak as he casts the spell uh, and, um, it just lots of lovely little details about that and they're all you know all they have all sorts of charts that you can roll on to figure that all out but after you do it for a while you can you start thinking of things yourself and you start coming up with that it really en um, encourages that so what would you how would you rate this aha i would give this a um i would give this a strength of 1800 and if you know what that means <laughs> And if you know what that means, <laughs> this game is for you. <laughs> nice, nice. Well played, well played. I, I won't give it a rating because I've never, I don't have the book and I haven't um, uh, game mastered it, so it won't be fair. Uh, but I know as playing it, it's, 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 I always have a great time. It's always something I look forward to. What is best in life? To crush your enemies and drive them before you and hear the lamentations of their women and to play dungeon crawl classics. <laughs>